Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. Um, she put it out there. I don't know. What's it again? I see the winds are blowing at Kaya. And this was, was it early this year or last year? No, this was like three weeks ago. Never. Two weeks. It was not. Was it? Yeah. She then says, <laughs> Kaya <laughs> Femme Management or whoever is in control now better not move that man until he interviews me. So my worry is, Tato, after today, I agree with you until. <laughs> He said, that man must interview me first before they move him from the best tea in the city. So should I stay after this? Of course. Oh, okay. Hello, Ntavele Ndikozi. Tumela Ntete Mkwele. Okay. Kite Ndikai. Where now, man? Hey. Halala shine. Halala shine. I get it you've been warming up talking to other radio stations because that's what you do. You warm up Kabona and you come for the final. Yes. Thank you. She announces yesterday that this is the last interview because she needs to now sit behind the desk and work hard. Yes. It's been a journey, wasn't it? And Dr. Mukule, let me start first by greeting Kaya FM listeners. Dumelanko Kaya, Dumelanka Modukoloing, everywhere you are. Oh, yes. Even on Kaya TV, hello. Hello, hello. Sure, it's been a long journey. You know, we talk about just the journey of the mutual bank. Yes. But the journey started in 2009, okay. uh, when I left formal employment mm. uh, to join entrepreneurs, yes. and I decided to explore. Yes. Uh, so the story goes back that far. Yeah. Yes. Now, here you are, 2009, you leave the comfort and the security of knowing where your money comes from. Yes. Why entrepreneurship? Sure. I believe I'm a born entrepreneur. Mm. Um, both my parents are entrepreneurs. So I'm born in an entrepreneurial family. Oh, okay. So business to me is natural. Okay. Uh, I've seen my parents' businesses on a high. I've seen them on a low. So my father is a firm believer of family meetings. And oh, yeah, okay. no, we discuss business. We have family meetings. We have strategic sessions at home. Jeez. So that to us is, is, is normal. For me, it's normal to have these discussions. It's yes. normal for us to say, hey, Ikara, this business has reached a ceiling. What yeah. do we do? Yeah. And then we have to come up with different ideas or we think you should go this route. And yeah, so that's where Kinyan Thank you. Yes. Now, give me, take me back. Take me back into this house. When you say we, how many? So there's five of us um, at home. My Luckily, thank God, both my parents are still alive. We are, we are so lucky. So we have, I'm um, the girl number four or five. Mm. I was I was last born for a very long time. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Until my my younger brother came, ah, came along, but okay. I was the youngest for a very long time. Uh, and then he came along. So there's five of us. Mm. All five of us, uh, others are working and in business. You know, there's the element of business okay. in all five of us. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's a... And it's strange that even now, if you, if you meet my father, he's still very active, you okay. know. Because yes. my dad, at this age, he would come and say, Hey, what's about Kobo Tsabelo? And that's where I'm from. Kobo Tsabelo ke batla Disney. And I'm sheba rara batun. How batun Disney? Kobo Tsabelo. How young is this man now? He is in his late 60s, oh, and he'd be like, young very young man, yes. and he's not slowing down anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, and then he would be like, you know, I want Banaba Kumbotabele Babeli Disney, you know? And we look at him like, ah, Papa, now it's Now it's time for young stars. Yeah. I remember when the Sasa thing was going on, or no, there was a time when Sasa Grants, they wanted to establish micro businesses in yes. townships, you know? And my mother was like, yeah. Maybe this is because at home, my mother runs a manufacturing and school uniform store okay. for close to 40 years now. Oh, okay. So that's what she's been doing for the past 40 years. Okay. So she was like, yeah, maybe I can diversify my business and get into this finance. And I look at her and I'm like, wait till you're all in your 60s. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, but yet your mind is still on some opportunities. What yes, do I yes, do? So yes. that's where I get it from. You, talk, uh, you tell a story about how you grew up watching them. Yes. Running a school? A school uniform. A so school it's called Dikozi School Uniform. Yes. Yes. And this is in Butsabe? Yes. 
And you guys are where you are today because of the hustle that these two had. But what were they doing before the school? Did they just start running the school uniform shop or Libona, they did what you just did, left the security of being employed and went into entrepreneurship? So this is the story. So my father was working for a company, uh, a delivery de Buga. So books, yes. right? Um, so when he was delivering books, then he built relationships with different suppliers, customers, and so forth. And then I guess that's where he got it from, to say, actually, I can do this. Mm. So he left that and started his own thing, which yeah. is, he, they had, I think my father was one of the first people to own a, a bookstore, okay. right? Okay. He was one of the first black people to actually serve on a book association, hey. um, this associations, right? So they tell a story of when they were busy selling these books to different schools, then they started asking about uniform. Hore, how about you also, you know, Supply. suppliers with uniform? And that's how then the uniform, you know, started. Uh, yeah. And then that's when my mother started the manufacturing. Where, so was, they she, literally, where was she before the... My mother taught for like six months. <laughs> she was supposed no to be a teacher. So she said she went and taught for like six months. And then after that, she was like, no, you're great. <laughs> Let me run this uniform. No, thing. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much. I'm going to go my entrepreneurial route. Yes. So she, she so basically she's been her own boss ah. since forever. So ah. she's been a working mother. Mm. She's been a, a businesswoman. Mm. I mean, she's the mother of five yeah, and yeah. a wife. So I've seen her yeah. juggle everything. Yeah. And for me, I was like, I hear people say you can't do it all. I'm like, no, but I've seen my mother. Yes. Uh, my mother has done it all yeah. with yeah. the support, of course. Yeah. So she had a great support system. Yeah. Um, they stayed with my father's family, my parents, or the, my grandparents for a very long time yeah. until they passed on. So yeah. she, she enjoyed that great relationship and the support from the family. I'm talking to Ntabilindi Kozi. Uh, we've been reading about her. Uh, she's been making news. Um, the first woman to own a mutual bank. And we'll get into that journey um, uh, in, a, in, in a short while. But I think what is important is to really try and carve um, this story around where it all began, the upbringing and all of that. And not only that, she's an avid Kaya FM listener. We haven't played Castro and Baba Mama Busib Shlongo in forever. And you decided that we should bring it back. Why that song? You know, I, I don't listen to music, funny enough. I don't listen to radio. Mm. I prefer silence. Okay. I can drive from here to Butzhabelo with no sound. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. But then the first time I tuned on Kai FM mm. and I heard you on radio, yeah. I was like, I can listen to this guy for three hours. Oh, yeah. So you're the only person in my car that I can play for three hours. Listen, can we go now? <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> so when I heard that song, I mean, you played that song yes. back in the day. Oh, yes. And that was my song, you know? So I have Scheme, my friends that I grew up with you from sure. boarding school. And Bakang was like, so I'm like this. When I discover a song, even if it's three years later, because everybody's like, this yeah. song was, you know? And I'll play this song called Scheme. And Bakang would be like, Manarona, can you hear your song? Yes. And I'm like, yeah, this is my Kaya FM song. Yeah. Timo plays this song. So that <laughs> song is our song. <laughs> when I was trying to get it, I was like, the only person who knows this song, yes. yeah, Bakang. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So yeah, I got hooked. You are the best like that. Ah, no, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be right back. Let's take a break. It is Kaya FM 95.9 and Asaka. Yeah, no, go right again. Tabeleng <laughs> has taken us to the archives and bringing out songs that we haven't played in a while. And they sound so good, so nice and refreshing. You saw them live? I did. Uh, so, <laughs> so during the former executive mayor, and uh, yes. so I worked very closely with the Ekuruleni municipality oh, at some okay, point. Okay. So they had an event. Uh, I remember we went, we went there, right? Yes. Just an evening event called Jamiston Lake. Oh, they yes. had a marquee. It was a huge event. Yeah. And uh, Mafikuzola was performing live. <laughs> they performed this song. You know, the former minister, Don Vula Mukonyani, yes. right? She wore these high heels. Yeah. Like everybody who knows Mami. Ah, no, 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 She's no. proper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we were go front, go staging. Yes. Really too. Cheers, my mom and I said, get down. Una suck, are Yeah. And I was like, there is no way. <laughs> I am letting... <laughs> I am letting...
dating her. Yeah. Asaka hung feet. So it was like, Saka, Saka, I'm like, you're the grand, the grand, the grand, the grand. So that's like my song. So each time that song plays, it takes me back yeah. to that day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is Cafe 35.9 in Tabulin Di um, the, the woman that much talked about women in business, Kugule Tumfupi spoke about her and looking at the break uh, through that she has done when the Reserve Bank gave her the license to open up a mutual bank. Congratulations. Thank and then, you. Um, um, it's been a long journey, a painful journey. Sure. It's... Uh, what, four years? Yo, Ndadimukole, it's... Uh, you know, for... I didn't anticipate it. Um, naturally, I'm a, I'm a self-believer. You know, yeah, yeah. I hype myself up and yes. I'm, I'm like, yeah, we're going to... I'm very quick to say... Let's do it. Sure. I'm very quick. Yeah. And yeah. and the good thing about my journey is that I have surrounded myself with like-minded people. So okay. my team is all entrepreneurs. Okay. Uh, it's people that left their formerly employment to pursue business. Cool. So we hype each other up, right? So when I, when I heard about this, I was actually in Switzerland. I was invited by the Department of Small Business representing women from South Africa in Switzerland. Okay. So, I mean, Switzerland, Lo Osnon Vola, who invited me uh, through sure. the department, and she says to me, in Tabulin, you know, you run a network, you've done investment, a group investment before. So I believe in BEE. I yes. know people don't say, hey, BEE benefited politicians and yeah. whatnot. Look, I am who I am because of BEE, yeah, yeah. right? So be- previously I had done, um, so in 2011, let me take you back. So in yeah. 2011, I had a privilege of, of uh, inviting the former president Tabombeki. Okay. So let me tell you a story of how I did that. Yeah. So I'm invited to uh, to this event sure. where the former president, or oh, we, we are not supposed to call him former. Yeah. We call him president for yeah. life. Yes. So President Tabombeki was engaging with young people. Yes. And a friend what of a mine, Fatin, says, "My friend, there's this event uh, at the Tabombeki Foundation. Yeah. Let's go." I go to this event, I get these young, beautiful minds, you know, people yes. are speaking, it's lawyers, accountants, young people. Yeah. And people are talking about African Renaissance. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, hmm, you know, I have an event coming up in August. Yeah. And President Tabomek is talking about empowering young people. Yes. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, hmm. So uh, may his soul rest in peace. Uh, advocate, uh, no, former Ambassador Kumalo. Yes. He was the CEO of the Tabo Miki Foundation. Okay. So the mic is roaming and then the mic, you know, in on No, yeah. so it's oh, taking yeah. long, oh, yeah. Okay. And I'm like, no, Ambassador, I'm good. My voice is loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> no microphone. Yeah, I don't need microphone. I'm loud enough. Yeah. And Ambassador's like, no, you need a mic, you know. So we wait for the mic. The mic comes. And I'm like, uh, President Tabumeki, my yeah. name is Ntabelein Dikotzi. Yeah. I'm the founder of Young Women in Business Network. Yeah. On the 25th of August, yeah. at this time, I'm inviting you to be my speaker yes. at my event. The room went quiet. quiet. Yeah. Like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, like three seconds later, I realized that the room went quiet. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm still waiting for my answer. And everybody started laughing. Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. So, so that was in Feb. And then I was told, Mukon was like, no, that's not how you invite the yes, president. Yes, 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 and I'm like, it's done. So done. tell me the process now. So yeah. let's do the process. So and then told I'll do me, the formal yeah. yeah. And then thereafter, it was in Feb, yeah? Yeah. I called every Monday. I had a standing conversation with Ambassador Kumal. Every yes. Monday, he knew my voice. I'd yes. call him, I'm how are you today? I'm just checking up on you. Because they said, no, the president, you know, he's traveling and yes, whatnot, yes, so yes. they're not sure if he'll be in the country and whatnot. So I built that relationship from Feb up until July yes. when he called me. I was driving. The first time he called me. Yes. And I'm driving and he says, um, See, see, I'm like, yo, ambassador, wait, I'm parking. So I parked. <laughs> yeah, because anything can happen <laughs> Like, here. really, like, yeah. he's calling me. I've <laughs> yeah. been calling him since Feb. Yeah. And then he says, our guy will be in the country. I'm like, really? He says, yeah, but not on the 25th. On the 26th, I'm like, ambassador. I'll postpone it. No, it's the next day. Yeah. I'm going to rearrange everything. Yeah. Even if he said he's coming in September. I was going to change everything so that he comes to the event. Yes. So I, I was able to then, <laughs> I was able to, to host the President Tabombeki. Wow. But check this out. 
I, I don't understand the politics of that time. It was that time when people were saying, is he cope? Is he not? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that time? Yes, yes. He, he was not in the public for a long time. Yes. He, was, he came, he was seen in the public through my event. Ah. I was calling the media, everybody, sponsorships, everybody, and everyone's like, no, 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 no. You can't touch right? this. Yeah. Until he said yes. Now, everybody was calling me. But I don't have sponsorships, yeah. like zero. Yes. Two days before the event, I call my, I'm like, no, I run a network. That's why I run a network. So I'm going to call people to link me up with the executive mayor of Ekruleni. Because according to politics, the president cannot come in his region without, without him, him no coming, way. yes, and welcoming Protocol. him. <laughs> Protocol. So I call him. Luckily, he answered. I'm like, executive mayor, you don't know me. This is who I am. I've been liaising with your department for this long, and nobody's listening to me. President Tabumbiki is coming to your region. You're supposed to come and welcome him. You are not going to do that at my event until you guys sponsor me. And Hi. he said, have you spoken to this person when he mentioned the name? I said the same name because I had followed the process. He said to me, I'll, be, I'll call you back in five minutes. We were doing high fives. High five, this event is sponsored. Yeah. In two days, the event was sponsored. Wow. And that's how we did it. And wow. then the rest is history. Now, take me to you going to the Reserve Bank. Yes. Why the bank? This is the, my dream, right? So I believe, so when I was doing research, that event here, President Abumik, that's when I found out that Stockfells make 50 billion rand a year. Yes. So, I mean, we all have Stockfells. We belong good to Stockfells. We mm -hmm. know what Stockfells are. But we never thought of it as how much it accumulates to. Mm. So when I found out it accumulates to 50 billion, I was like, no, let us use the Stockfell model to buy shares in white-owned entities that yes. are looking to transform. Mm -hmm. At least it's a start. Yes. That's what I did. So mm -hmm. we own shares in Namlock, which is distribution, warehousing, and logistics company, wow. right, through the same model. Yeah. And then I was like, but buying into white-owned entities that we know nothing about, we don't understand their culture, it doesn't make sense. Mm. Let us build and create our own wealth. And for me, the only way to do that is through a bank. Because a bank is purely deposit taking, right? Mm -hmm. The Reserve Bank is there to regulate depositors' funds. Mm -hmm. This is my dream. 10 million people saving 200 rand a month, right? That accumulates to 24 billion a year. Sure. You can imagine how many industries we are going to build how many jobs we are going to create through 10 million people just saving 200 rand a month. 200 rand means absolutely nothing. On my own, you as an individual, but 200 rand. As a collective. It's a lot of money. And that needs to be done by entrepreneurs, not government people, because mm -hmm. they're not entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Government is there to design policy and mm -hmm. make our environment conducive. Mm -hmm. But it's up to us as business people to create these jobs. Mm -hmm. So that's my dream. Sure. The only way for me to achieve that, it was through us getting a banking license so that we can accept uh, depositors' funds. And then we'll then be able to, you know, there's so many people who work around with contracts yes. that are worth multi-millions that yes. can create so many jobs but there's lack of access to capital exactly how about we work together mm. and support those people and in such a way that obviously when they grow and are, are sustainable they will create jobs mm -hmm. it's as simple as that though simple however the hurdles the hoops that you must jump through mm -hmm. to get it done how long did it take you I remember, <laughs> so I write an email to the Reserve Bank and I'm like, we're YWB and CFI, we have over 10 million, uh, we want to register as a mutual bank. They write an email back to say, thank you very much. We are the regulator. We can't be a referee and a player. Go to the audit firms. They're the ones that put applications together. Those are consultants. Mm -hmm. They're going to cost us money, yes. right? Yes. And I was like, first email, I'm like, but how, you know? And they have a clause that's standard that says they can't blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay. The last time a bank was registered was in 2001, 2002. Up until the new ones that were registered 2018, 2019. So there's a gap 
mm. of new banks being registered. Mm. Therefore, there's a gap of skilled people that are able to put applications together. Aha. So it's a rare skill to have to put a banking application together, right? Mm. I'm innovative. I'm an entrepreneur. I believe in collaboration. I believe in butter deals. Mm. I, money, the lack of money for me means absolutely nothing. Mm. As long as they can get the service from somebody else, mm -hmm. good for me. Yeah. So I go out and I say, okay, I'm going to put together a group of consult black consultants because mm -hmm. I am pro-black and mm -hmm. I'm unapologetic about it. Good. I'm going to put together a group of black consultants that are like-minded, that want to achieve the same thing as me. Mm -hmm. Guys, I don't have money to pay you to put this application together. Yes. You want, you have the skills as a collective to put this application together. Yes. Let us put this application together. This is what this bank will mean for us. Create an opportunity for yourself, mm -hmm. for the future. Yeah. You will not get anything now. Yes. So let's work and get this for the future. They are great. So I have a group of black consultants, Still Waters, Brand New Harvest, TGR attorneys. Mm. So that's a group that I put yes. together. Yeah. To put an application together, Dedemukwele, anything more than 15 million rand. So there's a 10 million that's required by the Reserve Bank hmm. as a capital, capital minimum requirement. Yes. To put an application together, more than 15 million rand. It took us over four years. That 15 million, they thought it would be like uh, in a year, you know? Yes. A year became two. <laughs> it sure. became three. It became four years. And we stuck it out. And we really did. And we, here, you know, it's a, and then we went through, we want the bank to be majority black women owned, mm. right? Mm. We went into meetings where on the other side is other races that are saying, we have the money. We have the systems. You, like, what are you bringing to the table? I'm like, we are black women. Mm -hmm. And this is our institution. This mm -hmm. bank must be owned by majority black women. Yes. We walked away from deals where we were offered money to say, but this bank will be white majority owned. And we said, no, we are not fronting. We are not going to sell our souls because it's literally selling your soul. Mm -hmm. So we walked away from such deals because we wanted, ours was to convince the Reserve Bank to say, Reserve Bank, we, we really need this first black woman or majority owned mm -hmm. to be black owned. We don't have a black owned bank in the country that mm -hmm. is genuinely black owned. Mm -hmm. So it was that for the longest time. It was, wow. here. if you're not mentally ready, physically, emotionally and financially, sure. Sure. you will drown. You got the answer when? The 9th of March. So the 9th of March. <laughs> so, we, but so I work with Kamukhaelo and uh, Porsche, right? Mm. So in the office... Women. Women. Like, we do work with men, but in the women. <laughs> Oksalayo. Oksalayo, majority mm. black women. And we are unapologetic. So we go out to get something. And so I'm driving and Porsche reads this email. I'm like, yo! Mama Miri, let me park so we park again. Yeah, yeah. We start celebrating. We hoot. Yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. And we were crying. We prayed. We, yo, it was overwhelming. It, it's, it was like so surreal. Like it really, really happened. Yeah. Four years later. Four years later. Like it's a... Uh, How many meetings? I, I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> I lost count how many candles we lit. I lost count of the meetings. I lost count of strategic sessions. I lost count of all of that. But you know what's the nicest thing? In a country like ours, that is corruption every day. Mm -hmm. There's no brown envelope. No lobbying of politicians that are behind us. No some secret multimillionaire somewhere that is behind us. This is pure black excellence mm. and pure black excellence from ordinary unknown South Africans. So it's it's like, you know, the I mean, we have our shareholders, the 550 shareholders. I remember when I started, people were like, you know, Tabling, if this bank is owned or it's, it's ran by, then they say the name of mm. this popular uh, Basitana. You know, if mm. Basitana, if this bank was ran by Basitana, it will be up and running now. And 
we said, no, we need to show that there are black people there, out there that are capable, mm. that are skilled, that even others are not even educated, but they have invested in mm. the CFI because they want to see this black bank happening, right? Mm. So there are unknown people. If you go to our offices in our boardroom, we have pictures of all our board members and people that work in there all the time are like, who, who are, are these people? Yeah, yeah. And the only name you can recognize is Osin Tikisi Sulu's name because mm. she's the chairperson of the board, yeah. right? The rest of the people, it's unknown people. Before I, I, I registered the CFI and I was in the media, I was an unknown person. Yeah. How were they going to know that an ordinary young black woman can do it? Can do it if we only use known faces and known names. Then it makes sense why you chose Lira then. Ah, oh, that's my jam. I'm going to start inside. crying. So <laughs> strong. She asked for it and she's here for it. After the break, you're going to hear it. So is this the, should I say, the, the mantra that kept you going? Yes, yes, yes. Like, it, it, it's, inside, it's so strong, right, mm -hmm. that even if I wanted to stop, I can't. Um, when I started, I said I believe I'm a born entrepreneur. I think mm -hmm. this is a God-given gift. Yes. I'm, I, I believe I'm chosen to do what I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's not just believe, it's the sequence of events um, mm -hmm. that happened that Even I go back, raised. I'm like, yeah. yeah, and what I studied, uh, mm. uh, I mean, when I did my master's in entrepreneurship at VIRT, my, my thesis was on development finance institutions, wow. how to identify business opportunities. Yes. Like, yeah. I don't know why. Yes. <laughs> I yes. honestly don't know why I did that, but... Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense now why Wonderful. I studied Wonderful. that. Wonderful. So it's uh, when we celebrated, when we first launched the CFI, we played it, just our mantra song. Uh, good. When we celebrated 10 years in business in 2019, yes. it was, you know, it's, yes. it's that song. Yeah. Uh, hopefully Lira is listening that when we launched the bank officially, I would um, love for her to perform it live. Just say, just say, and then we'll make it happen. <laughs> I mean, this, this is Kaya. This is we are the station that made you listen to uh, to music. Thank you. Hello. Okay. Just say when. When we launched the bank officially, to go Lira performing the song live. Done. Thank Done. you. Just when. Yeah. Then we'll speak to Lira. Yes. And it must happen. Thank you. And I can even see the first ad. Yes. But let's talk about the stuff that I think we are curious about. Mm -hmm. And what I like this media statement you released yesterday saying mm -hmm. that this, you're doing your last interviews now, wrapping yes. that up because you need to start working. Yes. You were given what, a year? 12 months, yes. So they, so the Reserve Bank gives what is called a section 11-1 to say we, we are now authorizing you to establish a bank okay. and we give you 12 months. Okay. So what that means is that in these 12 months we need to put systems together. Mm -hmm. Our bank is a digital bank. Yes. So we will not have branches mm -hmm. and brick and mortar, but we will have presence in different provinces. Mm -hmm. Our head office will be here in Kauteng. Mm -hmm. uh, so we put systems in place. You need to raise capital. Mm -hmm. So because we, our proposition was we want the majority, especially the black women, to own it, on the 1st of June, uh, we're going to open up. 1st of June 2021, Okay. we're going to open up to the public to join us yes. and buy shares. Yes. So we just we know that it will start from a thousand rand. Yes. We just don't know the other details because the Reserve Bank must still approve the process. Okay. So we know that. So we're saying the first of June so that people can start planning, yes. uh, start saving. It will start from a thousand rand uh, to whatever amount of money that you yes. have yes. Uh, from the first of June. Another thing that we always get asked, you know, the beauty of such a network is. Parents have invested for their kids, yes. uh, six months old. So there's no age limit. Um, okay. I remember, uh, may her soul rest in peace, Dr. Tandin Glovo, who was mm. also one of our shareholders. My aunt. Really? You're talking family there. Oh, yes. You were there at her funeral. You yeah. were the MC, right? Ah, yes, yes. oh, okay. So she's your aunt. Yeah. She's family. Okay. <laughs> she supported us. <laughs> yeah. So Dr. T, I mean, at her age. Um, she recruited, you know, women and men mm. her age. She was an advocate for yes. us to say, we want, we need this bank, you know. Yeah. She would call me Kasande and say, Tabile, uh, I have people here that I'm recruiting. I'm yeah. like, Dr. T, it's Sunday. Hey, 
Patong, you're going to sleep when you are dead. Thank you. Get your laptop, let's get going. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, That's okay, no, and I would go and work, yeah. you know. Um, so we have people like that that are older, much older. I mean, we have Ntate Mashiko who had investment to go to the other commercial banks. Mm -hmm. You know, Ntate, Ntate Mashiko does not have a car, but he went and took his investments from the commercial banks came to our offices and said, ladies, I am supporting this black bank. Here's my money, right? Mm. I'm investing my money here. I have grandkids, I have kids, but I'm investing here. So it's people like that that are older that understand. We have mm -hmm. young people that understand. You know, we have people that we never even thought you'd get a call and somebody says, I'm a truck driver. Kill my mates radio. Yeah. How do I, I don't even have this email address yeah. story that you're talking about. Yes. How do I do this? You yes. know? Yes. And we'll tell him, okay, can you post song here? <laughs> you know, your phones <laughs> yeah, and yeah, what yeah, this, yeah. things like that. So yeah. we're not excluding anybody. We what just is say, a mutual bank for those who okay. So right now we're regulated and so in South Africa there are three levels of banking. It's the Cooperative Banks Act, mm -hmm. which means the stock fell. You can only offer your products to your members only. So yeah. if you have a contract, you can't, we can't service you yes. because you are not a member yet. Yeah. Right. Then you have a mutual bank. A mutual bank is a mini commercial bank, mm -hmm. which the minimum requirement is 10 million rand. It's literally owned by the depositors. Mm -hmm. So now when we say we are opening up for people to join us, your bank shares and you're going to be a deposit so you're owning it so yeah. it's owned by the depositors themselves yeah. but that allows us to then service whoever right then you have your commercial banks as we know that yes. like all of us yeah. know the commercial yeah. banks there is 250 million so the mutual bank allows us to service whoever that walks through our doors whereas mm -hmm. here we were restricted now are there restrictions in terms of who should be your members no so none whatsoever so we have already have shareholders from Lesotho, Botswana, Swaziland, you know, that that saying we want to be a part of this. Mm. Uh, so we have no restrictions whatsoever. When are you opening up? The 1st of June, mm. um, we open it up for people to then join us at the Young Women in Business Network by shares. By then, we would have communicated how much, what does yes. it mean and all of that before the 1st of June. Mm. So we are talking to different distribution channels to make it easier for, for us to, to access, yeah, yeah, for yeah. people to So where access. do we go for more information or to keep tabs? Or we will, we... yeah. So we're going to, on our website, we'll update it mm. so that everything is updated on our social media and hopefully also on, hopefully you invite us and ask us again of when course. we are ready for it. You are home. <laughs> this is my home. This is home. Like Manuela. I'm like. <laughs> so that announcement, that announcement, I'm actually committing Kukum uh, Fepi. Yes. Our business lady. I mean, yes. that's who we look up to. Yes. Um, to be the one to guide us through that process. Yes. And I think uh, she'll be the one who will be happy to do that. So mm -hmm. that platform is available. Thank you. Uh, we also make a promise that uh, you and Lira will be contacted oh, yes. when you do, uh, uh, you know, uh, launch. Mm -hmm. Our hours today was, let's bring you in to celebrate you. Thank you. Um, and not only celebrate you, but also, you know, spread that message that mm -hmm. you want it, go get it. Yes. Yeah. So we want to say to you, you're on the right path to celebrate you, Thank African you. child. Um, keep shining. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And by the way, as for it, it shall happen. You tweeted it and here it is. Like, you're my guy. Thank you.